Now, what does SR stand for in the SR-71? A strategic reconnaissance. It's a reconnaissance aircraft. There's a lot of technology because this was really the first airplane that was developed that I know of to operate in the type of environment that the SR-71 flew in. So what kind of mission profile did you fly with this airplane? Well, the airplane was designed to fly high and fast. Every airplane has a design point where you know, set up for a certain type of performance, and this one was to go very fast. So flew at the top 1% of the atmosphere in excess of Mach 3, over 2,000 miles an hour. So who actually went flying on the aircraft in a mission? Well, you have a, a pilot and a navigator. The navigator is trained as a reconnaissance systems officer, RSO. Very complex job. He had to be the navigator. He had to be the reconnaissance expert. He performed duties like a co-pilot would in reading the checklist to the pilot because the pilot has his hands full of just keeping the pointed end forward in the aircraft. What was it like to realize that you were going to be the guy responsible to get this off the ground from the mission and back on the ground again? Well, it's a daunting responsibility to know you're taking this irreplaceable national asset out to the far reaches of the globe and the top 1% of the atmosphere, and you're not even going to talk to anybody during the entire mission. You're, you're there by yourself basically getting it done, and, and you got to know the airplane, you got to know the, the issues that can occur uh, both as a mission and mechanically. So as a pilot, how much did you know about the reconnaissance that was happening on that specific mission? Uh, in general, I knew the capabilities. I wouldn't necessarily know what camera was in which bay that day, and I, I really didn't care because I'm going to fly the smoothest platform I can during the mission profile so that the cameras can do the best work they can do. So learning to fly this airplane, there's no other airplane in the U.S. Air Force that was like it. Um, what were the steps you had to go through in order to get checked out and learn to fly this on an operational mission? Well, it took a year of training to get fully qualified to go fly operationally. That's about twice as long as any other airplane in the Air Force. Uh, part of that was because of the complexity of the aircraft and the demands of the mission itself. You know, you're, you're flying all reaches of the globe. That black line I talked about, it was important to stay on that black line getting off that line could put you on the front pages of newspapers around the world. So it was important to, to fly it very precisely. You said you spent almost a year in the simulator before you got to touch the jet, and the simulator had no visuals. Um, what is it that you were trying to learn, and why did you find that to be such a valuable training? Well, you spent about a half year in the sim before you could touch the airplane, a full year of training before you were released operationally. But the, the sim had a, about 4,000 square feet of computers back then to run this simulator. And it was extremely good fidelity. It behaved just like the airplane. It had six degrees of motion, so it would move when you had a burner light. It would, it would jar you a little bit. You could feel it. It felt just like you're in the aircraft. And you were so focused on the instrumentation, and it was so such good fidelity, you would get wrapped up in dealing with normal flying and abnormal flying and emergency flying to where you thought you were flying the airplane at times. It was that intense. It was a wonderful training aid to work together as a team to deal with those, those problems. So sitting up in that cockpit with windows like that at 80 some thousand feet going over 2,000 miles an hour, what does the world look like from there? It's, you can see the curvature of the Earth. You can also see where the blue sky turns black because that's the reason the sky is blue is the atmosphere. When you get to the top 
There's nothing there to make it blue any longer. When you roll into a bank and look up, it's just black. Alpha Charlie 429er, clear for takeoff on runway 28 left. Alpha Charlie 429er, clear for takeoff on runway 28 left. 